Dawson Garcia is officially home. We're going to talk about how the Gophers can fill out the rest of their roster, and then we're going to end the show with another edition of Guess That Gopher here on Lockdown Golden Gophers. Locked On Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb. I am a host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant. Happy to be here with you. We're growing this podcast over on YouTube, so please go check it out on YouTube. Press the subscribe button right down there. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. And if you like listening to it, the audio version, be sure to subscribe, like, and follow wherever you find your podcasts, whatever platform you prefer, and leave a five-star review. If you're in the YouTube channel, drop some comments on what you're liking, what you want to hear more about. We're going to really get this thing off the ground. I'm already in the works with getting interviews set up with other analysts other locked on shows, some of our rival podcasts we might do little crossover shows with. So tune in, lock in. We're going to have a good time with this podcast. Now, again, please subscribe to the podcast. If you've listened to the audio version over the last couple weeks, I had an awesome theme entrance song going in. It gave me lots of hype. We're going to get that back over here. So just Stay patient with me. We're working it over to the YouTube side, but we're going to have a great time. But we need to dive in to what we are really here to talk about today, and that is Dawson Garcia, officially a golden gopher. I mean, we all have been hoping for it. People were hoping for it far before he put his name in the transfer portal, and it's real. It's happening. It's not. You can pinch yourself. Yep, yep, pinch yourself because it's real, it's happening. There's no take backs. He's coming, and I'm excited to have him home. We're all excited for him to be home in Minnesota. So let's talk a bit about what Dawson Garcia brings to this Gophers team. Now, everybody's excited because Dawson Garcia paired with Jamison Battle sounds like a match made in heaven, sounds like a huge jump up in the quality of basketball we are going to be seeing here at the University of Minnesota. And that is true. That is 100% true. But let's talk about how it can affect the entire program with what he can bring to the team. So Dawson Garcia, he's Officially home, as we said, he previously played at Marquette his true freshman year, and then he played at North Carolina his sophomore year. Now, at Marquette, he averaged 13 points a game, 6.6 rebounds a game, and he shot 36% from deep, averaging 29 minutes a game as a true freshman. So he can put in the minutes, put in the time. He's a great player to have on the floor. Now, at UNC, he wasn't a starter, but he was still playing significant minutes at 20 minutes a game, and he had a more efficient, seeing nine points a game, five and a half rebounds a game, but he shot 38% from deep. So he's more efficient more efficient in his three-point shooting. With the Gophers, I anticipate he'll probably outdo both of those scoring numbers. He'll probably average about six to seven rebounds a game once again. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him playing 25 to 30 minutes a game. Now, on top of that, what does he bring to the team? Well, he brings his ability to create his own shot. And that is something that is desperately needed on this Gophers team. We had two players that could do it last season. One was Jamison Battle, who was returning, thank the Lord. And two was Peyton Willis, who has unfortunately used up all of his eligibility and he will not be back with the Gophers next season. So having another scorer that can create for themselves is going to be huge for the Gophers. If we didn't bring in someone like Dawson, who is that caliber of a player, it could have been a tough go 
with only having Jamison Battle, Jamison Battle is going to get his. Don't get me wrong. He's going to get his. He's going to get his points. He's going to put in the work. But it would be a lot easier for teams to scheme to take him away if he's all we have as a guy who can create their own shot and open up the floor on their own. Well, no longer is that the case because we have Dawson Garcia coming to town. Now, not only can he create his own shot, but he has size and rebounding ability. He's six foot eleven, so he brings a lot of size. He still could fill out his frame a little bit more, and I anticipate as he continues to work through the strength and conditioning programs, he most likely will get a little bit bigger. That being said, it's not like he's going to be a double-digit rebounding player. He could be, maybe, if he's given enough minutes and asked to do that, but I don't think that's going to be the type of player he is. So averaging about seven rebounds is probably fair, and rebounding could be the weakness to this Gophers team looking at it early next season. We'll see, but that's just one flaw I see in our team as a whole given the roster we have at this moment in time. But great size, excited to have that on the team and joining the front court. Also, his ability to space the floor and play both inside and outside. He can hit the ball, hit the deep ball, and he can be a threat from outside. So he's a threat from all over the floor, and that's going to go a long ways because you can have him go into the post if needed. You can have him out on the elbow and creating his own shot, driving to the lane, kicking out, or you can have him line up outside right away. There could be times where we're running five out. So it's a great thing to have, or say he pairs up with Pharrell Payne in, on the court at the same time. You can have Pharrell Payne play in the post and Darwin, Darwin, Dawson Garcia step outside. So there's a lot of flexibility with him, and it's going to be a great addition to the team. Now, Dawson Garcia is the first McDonald's All-American to join the Gophers since Chris Humphreys in 2004, and he's the third highest ranked prospect to join the Gophers ever. Third highest all time as a prospect in his prospect recruit rating. So he's an absolutely talented guy. I believe he was 37th in the na- in the nation as a recruit on 247's composite rankings. So it's a caliber player that we haven't seen here on the Gophers in a long time. A long, long time. And we're excited to have that coming back in Ben Johnson's second year as a coach. It's only year two, guys. We're heading into year two. That's a great get. It's a program-changing get. Jameson Battle transferring here was a program-changing get. We're making big moves early. So get excited. It's okay to be excited. And if there's some struggles next year, it's still okay to be excited. We can have patience with excitement. So the one thing we're going to kind of touch on is hopefully Dawson Garcia does not have to sit out next year. This is his second transfer. So in most cases, you would have to sit out a full season before you can play. That being said, with the reason for transferring being close to his family who has had a medical emergency, he could potentially be granted a hardship waiver, which hopefully he will be so he can play immediately and contribute to the Gophers program. Now, this solidifies our front court, adding Dawson Garcia to our team. Now we have Jamison Battle, Parker Fox, Dawson Garcia, Trayton Thompson, and Pharrell Payne, all likely to play, play key minutes in the front court next season. So that's a great strength of ours. Rebounding still could be tough to come by, but overall, a rock-solid front court that you like to see now next i kind of want to talk about how we can fill out the rest of this roster we still have two more scholarships available so what can the gophers do with that in order to move forward that's coming up next All right, folks, let's talk about our friends over at Built Bar. See, Built Bar is a delicious protein bar that is filling, and it comes in the most amazing flavors. Have you tried coconut, mint brownie? They even have puffs flavored, which is their marshmallow 
flavor or not marshmallow flavor, but their marshmallow product. That's right. It's a marshmallow wrapped in chocolate. It is literally one of the best tasting bars that they have. One of my favorites. So if that sounds of interest to you, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? At Built Bar, they are all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, and then they make it healthy for you and good for you. I don't know how they do it, but they find a way. So head on over to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Again, that's LOCKED15 over at built.com. That's going to get you 15% off your next order. That's a steal. Why not give it a try? Get these delicious tasting bars. I recommend the mint brownie. It tastes like a Girl Scout thin mint cookie. It's great. It's absolutely so please head on over again, locked15 at builtbar.com. Now, thanks again for making Locked On Golden Gophers your first listen every day. But now it's time for a big announcement. Starting Thursday, next Thursday, April 28th, tune in to Locked On NFL Drafts live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our experts and lineup of insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, catch Odyssey and Locked On NFL's Mock Draft, special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Matt Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show all week leading up to the first pick. You can check this out at Locked On NFL Draft Live and Locked On NFL Draft YouTube page and also on the Odyssey NFL Mock Draft, which you can find at the Odyssey and Locked On NFL Drafts podcast feeds. When will this happen? It'll happen live again April 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern, April 29th at 6.30 Eastern, and then April 30th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Be sure to tune in. Great content with the draft. Hopefully, we're going to see our Gophers, Boye Mafe, Daniel Falele, Blaze Andres, and hopefully even more get drafted in this year's draft. Can't wait, and we will be sure to talk about it after on the podcast. So be sure to check it out. But we're not going to keep talking about football. We're going to go back to basketball and how we can fill out the rest of this roster. Now, you're able to have 13 scholarship players on the roster. And I believe we have two scholarships left after adding Dawson Garcia. So how are we going to fill that out? First, I believe we need to get a true point guard or facilitator who can help set up opportunities for both Battle, Garcia, and even Parker Fox, who can get his own he can find his own shot he's a scorer he was great an all-american at the division two level averaging 22 points a game and 9.9 rebounds a game parker fox is going to be a very welcomed addition after coming back from his injury so be we need to get a true point guard they don't need to be somebody that puts up a, a ton of points we already have three solid scorers that will see a, the heavy fair share amount of points coming from this roster. Not to mention a couple of freshmen that will likely tr- contribute. So we don't need a point guard on top of that that needs finds the need to score all the time. We need someone that can be comfortable getting eight points a game, maybe 10 points a game but averaging a good amount of assists and setting up the offense and being able to run the floor. Now, the second need that we need on this roster is three-point shoot. We did not shoot the three ball enough this past season. Again, I said we did not shoot ball enough this past season. So we need to add three-point shooting, preferably two. Now, I, I believe we have two roster spots or two scholarship opportunities left. So hopefully that true point guard can shoot and then we find one rock solid 
shooting premier feature player. So let's take a look at who we have coming to town and visiting. So we had Indiana's Parker Stewart came and visited on April 16th. Then yesterday, we had Hunter McIntosh from Elon who visited. Coming up on the 22nd, which is Friday, we have Taylor Cooper from Moorhead State. And then next, we have Purdue's Isaiah Thompson coming into town. Next week, we have Isaiah Thompson from Purdue coming into town. So lots of options, and we've also already met with Josiah Strong from Illinois State. All of these guys are guards. Now, we also had Nick Honor from Clemson and Cam Spencer from Loyola Marymount that were both considering the Gophers. Those two are gone and out of the picture now. Nick Honor recently committed to Missouri, and Cam Spencer recently committed to Rutgers. So those two, scratch them off the board. It's all right. We'll be okay. But of those other guys I listed, let's take a look at what they did this past season and how I believe they could contribute. And then let's talk about who could be the best fit with our current roster. So Parker Stewart averaged 6.2 points per game. He led his team in three-point field goals made and three-point percentage, where he shot 39.3% from deep, and he made 53 three-pointers last season. Now, he's also transferred from Pitt and from UT Martin, so I'm not exactly sure if he'll actually have to sit out a full year or not because it seems he sat out full years for both of those. So I don't know if this transfer will be able to be his one-time transfer and that he could play right away. So with that up in the air, it's a little risky, but also his freshman year was in 2017-2018, so... I mean, he's an older player. He might only have one year of eligibility left. His is really hard to determine, especially with the COVID season and players getting an extra year. I believe he might only have one year left, possibly two, but he he can shoot the ball from deep. I mean, he's proven that, so it could be a good commodity. Next up, we have Hunter McIntosh from Elon, averaged 13.3 points per game, 2.8 assists per game, and he shot... 38% from deep over his three-year career so, so far. Now, he's also visiting Nevada and Wichita State, and he's always been kind of a scorer at Elon, so it makes me wonder, is that going to be more of his focus, or can he take a step back deferring to guys like Garcia in battle? That's something to definitely keep in mind. I would love to have a point guard that could create their own shot. Again, having more players that can create if needed is beneficiary. It's going to be an absolute good skill to have, but not 100% necessary with how our roster is built right now. So Hunter McIntosh is an interesting name. Now, Taylor Cooper, this is by far my favorite personal guard. I hope we land him from Moorhead State. He averaged 9.1 points a game last season, but he averaged six assists a game, and he also led his team in steals for the past two years. So he gets it done on the defensive side of the ball, and he is a great assist man, which you love to see. It's the perfect setup for these other playmakers on our roster. So he's a favorite of mine. He also has two years of eligibility left. Last year, he only shot 33% from deep. But the two years prior to that, he shot 38% and 39%. So he can hit the three. It's just getting back and finding that consistency. But he's a favorite of mine. I really hope we can bring him in. Next on the list is Isaiah Thompson. He's from Purdue. He shot 42% from deep last year, 40% the year before that. He has two years of eligibility left. He was getting time. Not a, a vast amount of time, but he was getting time with Purdue, who was a top-ranked team all season last year. He averaged 4.2 points a game, 1.4 assists a game. So not hasn't proven to be a huge assist man, but I'm sure he can make it happen. But that three-point percentage, you love to hit it from deep consistently in efficient. So that's a great asset, and he's played in the Big Ten on a contending team, 
which that experience can't can't be downplayed. That is valuable and it would help this young roster. Now, the final two players I want to touch on are Michael Jones from Davidson. Last season, he averaged 11.5 points per game and 2.2 assists, 3.3 rebounds. He shot 42% from deep. And he has two years of eligibility left. He played on Davidson. They made the tournament. Three-point baller. Great shooter. He would be the perfect spacer on this team to help kick out to if Dawson and Jameson Battle can't create or can't they drive and kick. He is the perfect guard to kick out to. I think of, I mean, I'm not saying he is as talented as this guy, but what Duncan Robinson does for the Miami Heat, that is what Michael Jones could do for this Gophers roster. So he's another one that I really hope lands on this team. The final one is Josiah Strong, former Champlain Park player, he averaged 11.5 points per game with the uh, Illinois State Redbirds last year. Uh, he's 41% from deep, and I believe he at least has one year left, possibly two. Again, it's hard to tell with the COVID year and how these players are given the years back. So one, possibly two years of eligibility left. Now, of all of these players that I've listed out, my personal preference would be for the Gophers to bring in Taylor Cooper and Michael Jones. Taylor Cooper is going to be a great setup point guard. Thinking more, thinking more. Again, he's not. I'm not speaking talent wise. I'm not speaking level of play. But Taylor Cooper could play a Chris Paul type role. That role of being able to score when needed, but setting up his teammates. Even if you want to take a Ricky Rubio setting your teammates up in that manner. I'm not talking about that he's as talented as them or, you know, some people might be rubbed wrong by Rubio, but the way those guys set their teammates up, that's the type of point guard we need on this roster. And I think Taylor Cooper could be that. So he is the guy I want the most, along with Michael Jones, who I already mentioned could play that Duncan Robinson type of role stretching the floor, can hit it from deep consistently, can put up 12 points a game like he did this past season, basically. And he's the perfect kickout option for Garcia and Battle as they drive and look to create on their own. So if they isolate, they run an isolation, they drive, and then say Battle drives, he can kick it out to either Dawson Garcia or Michael Jones from the three-point line and have confidence that those guys are going to knock that shot down. 50% of the time. And that's that's great. That takes so much weight off of Jamison Battle and even Dawson Garcia's shoulders having that type of guy. So those two are the guys I really hope we can bring in. But in the end, any combination of Cooper, McIntosh, and Thompson at the point guard. So if we can get one of those three guys and then we can get either Michael Jones or Josiah Strong as that shooting guard specific role to space the floor and consistently knock down threes. That's all you're asking for. That's all you are asking from them is defend at a high level and knock down the three. Three and D at its finest. If you can grab one of those two to be a three and D player, and then you grab one of those three point guards to truly facilitate, but score when needed, that's going to take this program to the next step. I don't care if, if you get those two type of roles, we're going to be a, Fairly complete team. The only thing I see being a problem if you add those two types of roles is rebounding. There's a potential to have an issue with rebounding, but that's something we can work on. That's something we can work out. Players can step up their rebounding because rebounding is effort. So that's how I think we should fill out this team. That's what I'm looking forward to. And I hope you're getting excited as I am for this Gophers basketball team that is quickly approaching. And to close off the show, we're going to move to a game called Guess That Gopher. We played it last week. If you've ever heard of the initials game on KFAN, local radio here in Minnesota from the Power Trip, it's similar to that. That's coming up next, so stay tuned. All right, let's talk about our friends over at Rock Auto. You know, with cars and the ever-changing landscape of auto and 
auto issues. You hate when that light comes on, when you get the warning, the engine light, any anything that has to deal with cars and fixing them and maintenance, it's stressful. And you know it's typically coming with a large bill attached. But when you go to the shops, they're typically like, oh, well, this is the only option we have. And it's usually the most expensive one. And you got to dish out a bunch of cash. No longer. Why endure the often pointless and sometimes intimidating questioning from these shops when you could look strictly on your phone or computer and order the parts yourself? And you can choose from many brands. That's right here with Rock Auto. You can do it right from your phone that's in your pocket. It saves time, it saves money, and why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even sometimes 100% more for the same parts from chain stores or a car dealership when you can do it through Rock Auto for way cheaper. One example is a fuel pump for the Honda Odyssey is about $353 at one of those stores. You can find those on Rock Auto for $216, and all of that extra money is going right in your pocket. So go over to rockauto.com right now, see all of the parts available for your car or truck, and write locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Again, they have amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts that your car will need at rockauto.com. All right, we're going to close the show with this game. It's called Guess That Gopher. Again, it's like the initials game for Power Trip. So I'm going to give you six clues one by one, and you want to guess and figure out what gopher athlete I'm talking about. I'm not giving you initials. Your clue is that you know it's a gopher athlete. So I'll list these clues. I'll give you a little space between each clue. And don't worry, if you don't get it at the very end, I'll tell you who it is. So hopefully you can guess it right. The earlier you guess it, the more pride you get. I mean, props to you and go brag about it. Brag about it in the comments down below. And, you know, I mean, spoiler alert, if you don't want to find out who it is, probably don't look in the comments because people are going to be saying who it is or guessing ahead of time. Let's jump into the game. Again, I'm going to list a clue and then at the very end or, or whenever you figure it out, see if you can figure out who I am talking about, which go for athlete. So we'll start with clue number one. This gopher is still active at the professional level in their sport today. Clue number two. This gopher athlete transferred to the University of Minnesota after their sophomore year in college and spent two seasons with the Gophers. Clue number three. This gopher athlete was a two-time NCAA All-American and Big Ten Conference champion. Clue number four. This gopher athlete's overall record was 106 and five. Clue number five. This gopher athlete became the NCAA heavyweight wrestling champion. And the final clue, clue number six, this gopher athlete went on to sign professionally with the WWE. I think you got the answer. I'm going to give you five seconds and then I'll let you know. So the answer to this guess that gopher was Brock Lesnar. Did I get you? Did some of you think it was Gable? Because it wasn't. It was Brock Lesnar, two-time NCAA 
Big Ten Conference champion, two-time All-American, and one-time heavyweight champion, one-time heavyweight runner-up. Brock Lesnar, still wrestling to this day, also a UFC champion, also a WWE champion. Brock Lesnar, Golden Gopher athlete. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast. Be sure to follow us on YouTube. We got to build our subscribers up. So hit the subscribe button right there. I believe it's right there. If I'm pointing at the wrong spot, I'm going to look foolish, but I'm pretty sure it's right there. Hit the subscribe button. Follow us wherever you get your podcast. Please, please, please leave a five-star review. Feel free to leave comments. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Did you like this Guess That Gopher segment? Let me know down below. Also, we're doing a mailbag episode tomorrow. Please go over to Twitter and check out, and I will have a tweet pinned. Please drop any questions that you want us to talk about in that tweet or drop questions below. I'll check those as well. Any questions, I'm going to get those on tomorrow's podcast. And then Friday, we're going to do another draft profile and more. Can't wait. Have a great one. That's Locked On Golden Gophers podcast. Peace out for King Rock.